Hello everyone, and welcome to another J. Robinson Art Peel-Off Painting Project. Today we're going to be painting a bird. It's called the Great White Heron. This bird has a very long neck, and we're going to be catching him kind of in a sitting position. We're only going to be doing his head, his neck, and part of his body. But it's a really nice project, it's really fun, and it's really different. Uh, before we get started, let's just get out all the equipment that you will get when you unbox your peel off painting kit. What you'll get is a plastic apron to help protect your clothing. You'll also get a free set of very nice brushes that will allow you to paint various different projects. Uh, you're not gonna need this many for the project today, but you can always keep them and use them going forward. We provide you with a spatula to remove the peel. They also give you one paper towel, which I would strongly suggest you try to have a couple of others nearby or with you. I also keep a cup of water nearby, which we don't provide, but you can get that out of your faucet. The colors we're going to be using today are yellow, green, orange, white, and black. Now some of these colors are going to be used very sparingly. So as you can see, I don't have a great deal out, but I have more than enough for the project. This is what the project's going to look like. The Great White Heron. And what we're going to be working on today is an 8x10 canvas panel with the peel affixed. And that's what will come in your package looking like this. There's already a hole right here. So what I'd like for you to do first, is take your flat brush, put a little white on it, and we're just gonna paint the eye, just to give it some color. We're gonna come back in a few seconds, and we're gonna add color to that. But that's just to get us started. Give that a few seconds to dry. And while we wait for it to dry, I just wanna say that peel off is a really, really fun, easy, and interesting way for you to be able to explore your creativity while pushing around a few colors and just simply being creative. I'm just gonna adjust this a little bit. Make sure that we're in camera view. Damn, that should be good. And you can get our projects or our kits in a lot of different sizes. We come with the standard eight by 10 canvas panel. All peels are all affixed. We also have the 8x10 stretch canvas, the 11x14 stretch canvas, and the 16x20 stretch canvas. And we also have larger sizes, but they'll be made to order, so you'll have to call in and get those hooked up for yourself. We also do bags, and we do a lot of other uh, painting surfaces. So I just wanted to get you all situated, and of course, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. The next thing we're going to do is add a little color to that white. So we're just going to take a little yellow and we're just going to brush that right over. And that gives us a little bit of a setup. That just gives us a little coloration, something to work with. And we should be able to kind of go from there. Now we're gonna be lifting the peel, which is just gonna show where the eye is so that you won't have to go trying to mark it or search it. And how I like to use the spatula is I grab it by the neck and I go for any one of these corners. And I'm always just trying to find any place that I could kind of dig under to get something started. See, once I get a little surface pull, all I need is to lift to remove the peel and this is going to reveal the shape of our heron. See? And that little dot just shows us exactly where the eye socket is. From here, we're just going to be taking our flat brush and creating the rest of the shapes. So we're going to start right here now with just a little color that's going to go around the eye. 
Now that's a kind of an odd shape. So I'm going to take some green. And right on the canvas, I'm just going to paint around the eye. Just to give a little coloration around the eye. Maybe it comes back around here. And we're going to shape this up quite nicely, easily. Just want to show you how it's done. Okay. Now we're going to go in and grab a little bit more green. And we're going to create kind of an odd shape that looks sort of like this. Angle it here. Coming from the back. Just going to go like this. And this is going to be our eye area. Then we're just going to bring this to a little bit of a point. And that gives us the setup for the eye shape. Now we're going to be going back and darkening that color. Right now we're just establishing where things are. So now right over here I want to start the beak. Going right under here. And then going forward. So let's take a little yellow. Let's add a little orange and yellow together. Got a little bit ahead of myself because I want it to be very light. And now I'm just going to create the fur that's coming over the head. And in doing that, I'm just going to take the orange and go underneath and say that above it will be the head or the fur. Feathers, I'm sorry, not fur. And then I'm just going to very carefully paint in a basic shape that's going to be my beak. So I'm just going to run this straight cross now this is helping me to establish the top part of the beak just establishing it I'm not done I will be going back in here with some richer colors but I just want to kind of feather this in like so and now for the bottom part a little yellow a little orange keeping it light and now for the bottom part I'm only going to go a little bit here, just a little bit, but then right about here I'm going to break down and go this way. And then from here, I'm going to leave a little bit of white, but I want all of this to be the rest of my beak. And I'll show you what I've done. So I've kind of made where the mouth is. And now I'm adding a little bit of feathering underneath the bottom here. Maybe I'll go just a little bit closer. So I'll come here with this and just go right to about there. That's what I want. Now this establishes where my beak is. This establishes where my eye is. And the rest of this is just going to be the body. So why don't we go ahead and play with that for a second. I'm going to pick up a slightly different flat brush. And with this brush, or even with this brush, I'm going to add some white into this area so that when I come in with the gray to help show the feather distinctions, some white will already be here. Because now we're going to start building the body of our great white heron. I'm going to come close to the head and stop. And I'm just going to work this around, I'm trying to stay within the confines of the shape that I've peeled up. Because this is where all my color is going to go. Right in here, I'm going to go around that black opening. It'll all make sense in a few minutes, because once, once we add the gray, we're going to start dissecting the body of our great white heron. There. Now I'll switch back to the smaller brush so I can be more detail orientated. And I'll come closer to the body, even around the eye now. Because all I want to do is build a little color so that I can start to add gray to help show where the different feathering is. Show what the different parts of the heron's body is. Have some feathers coming off the bird. 
But first, let's just establish some color. Then I'll show you what I mean. Okay, this is good enough. This is good enough. Take this down a little bit. Okay. So now, now we're going to introduce some gray. Touch of black. Small, tiny little bit. Black is very strong color. I want to make this nice and light. And now let's just say, back in here on the, on the top part of the body would be kind of a shadow. So we're going to just create a little grayish tone right along the edge here. Let's make a little bit more of that. I like to go nice and gentle. Now right here is where the neck breaks. So I'm just going to take this and literally draw the shape in to say this is where the neck touches just the upper part of his back winged area. So all in here is shadow. And then also there would be some shadow turning this way along the top. So let's just put that in, feather this back a little bit. Then I'm just going to come around the front of my bird and add some more shadow in. Soften the color. Because see the white underneath is helping to keep the color from being too strong. And then his neck would actually turn back in here. Soften this up a little bit. See? So I'm really just establishing the bird's contour with this gray value. And now let's go right over across his back here and give a more distinct shadow. That will cut here. We're gonna richen this up a little bit more. And then maybe there's some coloration down here. Soften this up. And now let's go back. Add a little tiny bit more black. So you see what we're doing? We're just very carefully adding some subtle shadows and shading. Let's ride this along the top of his head. And here we're going to kind of paint all of this in around the eye. Just to give some shadow around the eye. Maybe underneath the eye to show just a little cheek if you will. Now let's soften this up. And if it starts to dry up on you, just grab a little bit of white and soften it up with the white and gray together. See, just soften that up. Just keep it moving in the direction that you want, which I'm feathering around the head, so I'm staying in the contour shape. Soften it up a little bit, but allowing some of that richness to show through. See, now this gives me a little bit of a cheek. This gives me some feathering on the body. We could just keep playing with this all day. Bring some straight lines with muscles, if you will. Feathering, if you will. Maybe in here. Let's say in here we go just a little stronger. Just a little bit. But when we do it, we do it where it has the look some kind of feathering taking place here. Like maybe there's some feathers that are actually kind of showing up. This would just scratch it in, a little white, blend it, soften it. Just have it running up in here a little bit. And this is good. This gives enough of an establishment that we can leave this for a second or two and come back later Add more, soften more. Just want to try to right there. Maybe even a little bit, like right up in here in this area. Just grab some of this color and just go with some straight line motions like that. Okay, now let's go back and strengthen around our eye. First, we're going to take a pointed brush small little one, go into some yellow, and we're just gonna re-dot that eye a little bit more. So now we're gonna carefully go in, adding a little yellow, 
clean off the brush, dry it on a paper towel, grab some of this green, and let's reestablish that. So now let's go in and very carefully paint in a nice, rich, darker value. We know where it is now. We've marked it. We've kind of like added some tones to show where it's going to be. Now we're just going to clean it up. Go around it. Enriching it a little bit. And then we set that point line right there. And then we established that there was a little bit just trailing the eye. Bring it to a little bit of a point and angle. And then just bring this in. There. See how rich that is? We're going to come back there in a couple of seconds. But now we're going to establish more of the darker values in our beak. Oh, I'm glad this happened because this is to show you why painting on black is so cool. Get to clean it up just that quick. It'll dry flat later. But here, let's take some darker orange. We try to work at the top here and let's just go right where we said the mouth was first so let's establish a nice dark line that we're going to add value to later but for now we're doing this so we'll know where our top and bottom of the beak is okay and now we'll take that same value and let's go right up here at the top and establish the top of the beak nice and strong. Now, as far as how wide it is, you got to use your own eye and discretion. So don't go big at first. Go small. You could always build bigger. It's like don't go dark right away. Go light, then add dark. So you can leave some of the light to help control the various different values. So you see how I'm taking my time, dragging the brush to the end. I come here and I just let it fade to the beak. Now we're going to do the same thing right along the top here. This mouth part that we called it, we're going to give it a slightly thicker value. Like this. Just letting the brush width work for me. I'm going to bring it all the the way to the end. I'm just gonna drag it like that. And clean this off so I don't contaminate. And then of course, we're gonna do the bottom. So now we're gonna take this color again and just gonna find a spot and a size that's comfortable for us and drag this right across the bottom of the beak, right here. This is just to add different levels of value within the mouth of our beak. See that? Now you can take the brush and of course you can add a thinner line, let's say just right here, just to give another value. And then maybe right along here too, we establish another line there. See, now those lines just give the beak some in and out motion, which is really good. We're going to come back to that. But right now, let's finish with the eye. I like the value of the green. I could go a little darker. So let's see if it'll take one more pass of green. Yep, it will. Let's take this green and just go one more time just to make it nice and rich before we decorate the eye. Easy painting, easy painting. See, nice. Now, let's put some black. First, we're gonna start with the center dot, just so we know where the eye is. So I'm gonna pick up some black, I'm gonna go right in the center, and I'm just gonna make a circle. Not all the way, just right inside. Like about that big. See that? Then I'm going to trim it, but not all the way around. So maybe I'll make a kind of a broken C back here, right on the edge. And maybe right here in the front. 
is another broken C. Going the other way, like that. Now that helps set the I in. And while we have this value, I say let's establish the mouth. So we're taking a little black on the brush. And remember this line we made? We're going to use the bottom of it. I'm just adjusting my pinky because I don't want it to be thick. But I just want to run a, a black line. Let me lift so you can see. See? I'm just establishing a black line. A thin black line. <coughs> That's going to run right underneath that thick orange line. To show where the beak opens up. I'm going to run this all the way to the end. You notice how my pinky's there to brace. Now there's a little bit of a nasal passage for the bird to breathe. So we're just going to fake that out right above it. Maybe just go right here with it and just pull. Stop. That's good enough. And then we'll just fake out. And put a little bit of a dark line down here. Just for contrast. See? Just for contrast. Maybe even we can carry a little bit of this back in here. Just a smidget. Just to give something in there like that. Now we're working. So now we have our head. We could even take a little yellow. See if we can't lighten up a little spot right in the front here. Just to keep the interest going this way. And then reestablish a little bit of a darker broken C right here again. Just to make this a little bit more distinct. Like that. Now we have our bird's eye. Our bird's eye view. Let's take a little bit of white, a little bit of black, make a nice darker gray. That's what we want, not black, but a darker gray. And let's establish right underneath here where the neck bends. Let's just curl this and bring in a little gray right here. Just to show where the neck actually bends over and then just to separate let's come here and feather in some lines that would be more to the neck just some shadows i'm gonna come with some color in a minute see what i just did there let's take some white and what we're gonna do with that is right along over here somewhere let's just feather out a couple of lines just like that see just let it stick right off the body and then let's say it comes down here and maybe some of this stuff starts to peel off the bird a little bit like like this see giving the bird just the look that some of this isn't so neat that there's little tiny feathering kind of protruding off the bird. And let's just keep going with that. A little bit. Just a few little accent lines, if you will. Just to ruffle his feathers. Just so that he's not sitting there so neat. Like there's some little lines of feathers that are coming off of his body here. Now let's go underneath and just do the same thing. Just give a few little lines of unevenness. See, right there. That's nice. And we can do the same thing maybe to the back of his head right here. We just come here and grab a few little lines and just let them kind of feather off like that. Now we've ruffled up our bird's feathers. We've given them some shadows. You can go in with a darker value of this and establish some other little line effects, some little things that you just might wanna 
add there. And remember, we did that part over there. So now let's go back with the white. And now let's just go a little bit over some of this. Just to kind of leave a little shadow, but make it more feathery. See? It's a lot. And you could take now a darker value and go up near the top edge and add this in just a little bit for that turn in the neck. Like it's kind of recessed in the shadow. You can feather this more. You could feather that more. You could add more orange tips, you know, to, to clean up areas. You can put yellow back into the painting, you know, by taking a little bit of highlight on the beaks areas a little bit. You know, just to help bring it together. And this is about it. This is... This is it. This is your finished bird. Just that quick, just that easy, just establishing a little highlight on the eye area again. Ta-da! And there's your great white heron. Told you it was simple. Told you it was easy. Told you it was fun. And the really cool thing about peel-off is it allows you to make so many changes that you start to establish yourself as a as an artist finding your voice finding your way finding a way for you to show that art can be fun easy and simple and it doesn't have to be so complex it doesn't have to be so hard you don't have to take everything so literal you know you could just have some fun pushing around a few colors and being creative just by Looking at things and saying, okay, I want to add a little bit more values or shading of color here. Just because. And there you go. Painting is done. Well, I hope you had fun. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Peel Off. And you can go visit peeloff.com to see the variety of kits that we offer. As well as if you're a senior community or a community or you're looking to throw an event, you could definitely contact Jay Robinson Art directly and we'll be more than happy to come out and provide you with our quality and excellent service just going to clean up a line in here just want to get rid of this just want to make this a little different there there it's better for me see using the black and uh, we're always available for parties and to have fun but mainly we want you to buy the kit so you could explore creativity, push around a few colors, and be creative. Until next time, take care and bye-bye.